Before we get started, I should mention that I researched this video in February 2018. I wrote it in April slash May, and it's now mid-June that I'm getting to film it. It makes no difference if it's the stock market, real estate, precious metals, or cryptocurrency. Before you invest in anything, you should understand how it works. And with all the Bitcoin mania at the end of 2017, it was hard for me not to get excited. But I decided before I put any money into this thing, I wanted to know exactly how it worked. Now it was pretty clear to me that we were witnessing some kind of bubble form right before our eyes. But in the back of my mind, there was always this thought that our two-year-old son Hudson and our daughter Parker might not know anything except cryptocurrency. In the same way that I don't remember life before the internet, they might not even know what a US dollar looks like. Now keep in mind, all of this research is only a few weeks or a couple months spread out, but I wanted to know what is Bitcoin, what is blockchain, and what are all these miners looking for? Let's start with what is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency, and that's pretty easy to understand. Imagine if you removed all the paper money from circulation and we all just had our bank accounts with how much money we had in them. I can go online and transfer you $100, and my bank balance goes down by 100, but yours goes up by 100. Bitcoin works the same way. I send a certain amount from my account to your account, which are called addresses. What makes Bitcoin different? Well, in our pretend scenario where we removed all of the paper currency from circulation, we relied on one entity, the banks, to keep track of who has how much money. But what if the bank makes a mistake? What if the bank gets hacked? What if the bank goes out of business? Who's really to say how many zeros I had at the end of my bank account and you had at the end of yours? Bitcoin is what's called a decentralized currency. Rather than a single bank or a network of banks keeping a ledger, there is a public ledger that anybody can download that keeps track of every Bitcoin transaction since the beginning of time. You can download it yourself. You can put it on your computer and see every transaction that's ever happened. Since everyone has a copy, people can compare ledgers and make sure that at least 51% of everyone involved agrees on one single ledger. That way, if you make changes to the ledger on your computer, probably in your favor, it won't match all the other ones and then it'll just be rejected. So then what is the blockchain? In the case of Bitcoin, the blockchain is that public ledger of every transaction ever made. A block is simply a one megabyte section of that ledger. The chain part is how all of those packets of information are linked together using cryptography. In order to add a new block to the chain, it has to contain a hash, which is just a 64 character string of letters and numbers. Anybody can create one of these hashes using one of the online calculators. Let's take a look at one. Okay, so here's a online SHA-256 hash algorithm calculator. Uh, and you can use it to encrypt anything you want. No matter what you type in the message field, the output will always be a 64 character string of letters and numbers. So for example, uh, in the case of Bitcoin, it would be all the transactional data, but let's just say we want to encrypt Mike and Lauren. And you can see as I keep typing, it just randomly generates this string of characters and it would be incredibly time consuming to guess this hash means Mike and Lauren. Uh, and so basically what I understand that the Bitcoin miners are doing is they're trying to create a hash, a very specific one with the transactional data that includes 18 zeros at the beginning. And they do that by taking the transactional data and then adding a nonce, I think it's called. So for example, if I were to add just say the letter M to the bottom, that changed the hash, uh, but I don't have a zero at the beginning. Let's add another M. This time it's B, let's add another M. It's A, M, 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 M. Let's get at least one zero. There's one. So Mike and Lauren with 21 M's, capital M's below it will result in a hash with one zero. And so you can imagine how difficult it might be if you wanted very specific transaction data and 18 zeros at the beginning. I don't even know if we can get two zeros. Let's keep going and see. This is way oversimplifying the process, but just to kind of give you an idea of what these computers are doing. Yeah, we can't get two zeros. So what is a Bitcoin miner? A miner is someone who not only keeps a copy of that public ledger on their computer, but they also attempt to add new blocks to it as transactions come in by guessing over and over and over and over again that hash so that they're the ones that get to put the new block in the chain. If one of their computers happens to guess the right hash, they broadcast it to the entire network who verify it, and then that block is added to the chain. So why would anyone waste time mining? 
These days, it's not profitable to mine on your own personal computer at home. You have to buy very expensive, very specifically designed computers to do exactly one job, which is to mine Bitcoin. When a miner guesses the hash correctly and gets to add their block to the chain, they're not only given all of the transaction fees that were collected for all the transactions, they're given 12.5 uh, Bitcoin as a reward at the time of this video. And also at the time of this video, that's well over $100,000. Why isn't everyone mining Bitcoin? In short, because adding a block successfully to the chain is exceedingly difficult. Like the value proposition of winning the lottery is better than adding a block to the blockchain with your own computer at home. That's why there's mining pools, there's cloud mining, and there's mega corporations building huge structures just dedicated to mining Bitcoin in places like Iceland and China and Russia. Now, I was never really interested in investing in Bitcoin per se, but I did think mining would be kind of fun. So I ran some numbers through some of the online profitability calculators and basically came to the conclusion that at this point, it's not worth it for me. The problem is Bitcoin is getting harder and harder to mine. So there's more and more people doing it and there's a limited supply of only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be released. In addition, they're reducing the reward as time goes on. Uh, it was just too much risk for me. I think there's definitely money to be made, but it did not make financial sense to me. On the other hand, with a huge risk comes the potential for a huge reward. If Bitcoin really does become a global currency, even sitting on a handful of actual coins would make you a millionaire in no time. So where does that leave us? Is it worth the enormous risk of mining or even investing in Bitcoin? Will you be investing in Bitcoin? Wrong question. Is Bitcoin an investment? No. Bitcoin is not an income producing asset. It does not pay dividends or produce cash flow. If the value of Bitcoin plummeted tomorrow, there's no underlying asset worth owning. You cannot say that about other businesses in the stock market because you are still producing something. There's factories, there's people, there's products, there's shelves that are stocked. There's something worth owning if the stock price plummeted. Not true with Bitcoin. You can speculate or gamble with Bitcoin, uh, but since I truly believe cryptocurrency is the way of the future, I'm not a naysayer, we're gonna call it trading, similar in the way that you would trade for an exchange. So before all you Bitcoin miners go furiously in the comments explaining why Bitcoin has value because it's scarce and has a limited supply and it's secure, uh, just keep this in mind, this is my opinion, and I don't think that trading for an exchange is investing either, that's just me. If you think trading yen for dollars and dollars for yen trying to catch you know, differences in price is investing, then you'll also probably think that mining or trading Bitcoin is investing. Okay, fine, will you be trading Bitcoin? No, I probably won't be trading Bitcoin either. If the price were to crash down into the three to $500 range, I might put a little bit of money into it just for fun. It's just too expensive to be used as an everyday currency. In fact, I've noticed just in the time that I've been researching this article and you know, in the past year, that Bitcoiners and miners have changed their language a little bit to reflect that. Rather than call Bitcoin a currency, they're starting to use the phrase store of value or an asset class. They liken it more to gold than the dollar. I don't invest in gold either, by the way. The only way that Bitcoin is going to become a global currency uh, is if you can earn and spend Bitcoin in a stable market. Right now, I don't know anywhere where you can get paid from a job in Bitcoin. It might be out there. I don't know where you can spend Bitcoin. I know if you search it out, there's places that accept Bitcoin, but you can't go to Walmart and buy groceries with Bitcoin. Uh, and the market is about as far from stable as you could possibly imagine. I'm not saying it's never gonna happen. Like I said, my kids may never know the difference, but we're a long way off. I'll say this, separate from Bitcoin, the technology of the blockchain is going to have far reaching implications and influence in the future of record keeping. Imagine, for example, your medical records were stored on a worldwide encrypted network rather than just on the shelves of a single doctor in your town. What if the title for your car was released when you paid off the loan according to a smart contract? So it's not some desk jockey at a bank who's processing your last check and then mailing out your title. Uh, it all happens automatically and is much more secure because it's on a decentralized network. Making predictions like this is like wheeling that big computer into the warehouse off the truck and having the foresight to think, hey, we're gonna have this same computer in our pocket and we're gonna use the GPS functionality on it to see who's around us and who wants to hook up. Like, 
there's just no way to know the potential of blockchain and cryptocurrency. So how do you get in on the ground floor if you don't want to invest money like me? In my opinion, invest your time. This is uncharted and very confusing territory. Learn everything you can, study it, become an expert, because I have a feeling in the very near future, developers who understand what the hell is going on are gonna be in very short supply and very high demand, and they're gonna be compensated very nicely for their expertise. I hope you learned something in this. I know I did in all my research. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.